Hello, my dear students. This is your host, Dr. Syed Parker. In today's class, let us see the overview of pesticides. As the world population is increasing day by day, there is a great demand for food cultivation. Hence, in order to meet or reach the global uh, food safety and security, the farming community is forced to use pesticides and these pesticides might be in the form of fungicides, these might be in the form of insecticide, herbicide. In order to improve the crop productivity, farmers are forced to use pesticide. But the major question is, apart from reaching the target site, these pesticides are also reaching the indirect uh, non-targets. So, the harmful and impact of pesticide is globally increasing day by day. There are different types of pesticides which are already banned by various countries but their use are still in persistence. What are the non-targets? For example, different livestock and birds animals, human beings. Once these pesticide reaches this non-target uh, species, then it causes biomagnification. What is biomagnification? Just imagine if you see in this uh, picture, you have a drop of water which is contaminated with the pesticides and this water is supplemented to algae. The algae uses this water for its growth and multiplication. This algae is consumed by algae eating species, insects, which is further reaches to insect eating other insects. From there, the fishes eating the insects. Small fish is being eaten by the bigger fish and the bigger one is eaten by directly by the humans. So each and every step, the concentration of the particular pesticide gets on increasing. In this slide, the concentration of mercury is getting intense. It is getting more and more when it reaches the human for consumption. So like this, it causes biomagnification. Hence, there is a great need for alternative. Once you apply pesticide, into the uh, farming area, it directly reaches to groundwater along with its influence on the crop. It reaches to groundwater through the soil. Once it reaches to groundwater, that groundwater is consumed by animals. And if we drink, for example, if it is the groundwater is consumed by cattle and the milk coming from the cattle is consumed by the human beings, it causes severe health implication. Recent reports have also suggested that the pesticides are detected from breast milk as well. Can you imagine the impact it is creating on the environment and on to the normal individual? The exposure of Pesticides can lead to various health related issues, for example, premature babies or premature uh, cardiovascular system in the babies, skin uh, aller allergy or skin infection causes cancer, causes liver damage, etc. There are so many complications related to the exposure of pesticides. Hence, in order, so in order to combat these uh, hazardous implications, there is an alternative way by applying biofertilizer. This combats the hazardous implication posed by the pesticides. So what are bio biofertilizers? Biofertilizers are the substance containing a consortium of microorganisms or a single microorganism that has the capacity to enhance the crop productivity to enhance, to improve the crop uh, production with various uh, pathways or with various uh, parameters. It is widely in practice, but the farming community try to overlook this 
the positive aspect of bio fertilizer and they will try to use normal conventional pesticides in this slide we can see the advantages of bio fertilizer what are the advantages of bio fertilizer it enhances the plant growth enhances the crop productivity increases the crop quality sustainable agro ecosystem further it also influences and increases the microbial activity in the soil which results in uh, degradation of organic matter improves soil fertility resistance against various environmental stress such as drought salinity ph temperature heavy metal pathogenic attacks etc it becomes eco friendly with less cost and promotes organic farming the use of bio fertilizer can practically reduce the use of uh, chemical fertilizer which is harmful for human health and it can also add value addition to the existing product what we consume it can increase the shelf life of that product etc these are some of the advantages of using bio fertilizers so this table gives an overview about the different types of bio fertilizer mechanism of bio fertilizers what are the groups which are involved to cause this mechanism and their examples my dear students if you study this complete table then you can answer any questions related to bio fertilizers first in the group is nitrogen fixing bio fertilizer what is the mechanism of it it increases the amount of nitrogen in the soil by fixing the atmospheric nitrogen and making it available to the plant who carries out this function free living symbiotic and associative symbionts free living microorganism in the soil symbiotically living microorganism in the soil symbiotic microorganism which live uh, closely in relationship with uh, plants roots such as rhizosphere near the rhizospheric soil or associative symbionts such as endophytes and some of the examples we can easily mention acetobacter anabina frankia rhizobium acetobacter alkalogens enterobacter etc azospirulum these are some of the names you can easily remember these are the microorganism which are capable of doing nitrogen fixation next comes in the list is phosphorus mobilizing bio fertilizer the phosphorus mobilizing bio fertilizer transfer the phosphor from soil to the root cortex these are bio fertilizers with a wide range of application example who will who will uh, carry out this uh, mechanism mycorrhizae mycorrhizae are the consortium of uh, microorganism which plays a very important role in agriculture and ecosystem example for this arbuscular mycorrhizae glomus species gigaspora species etc these are some of the example which you need to remember when you are when you want to write about the different types of uh, bio fertilizers mechanism of bio fertilizer etc next comes in the group is uh, potassium solubilizing bio fertilizer it produces organic acid that degrades silicates and aid in the removal of metal to solubilize potassium ions and make it available to the plants so who does this bacteria example arthrobacter bacillus species etc potassium mobilizing this was sol solubilizing uh, bio fertilizer this is potassium mobilizing bio fertilizer they transfer potassium from the soil in soils inaccessible form they take inaccessible form of uh, potassium and make it into accessible form to the plants and is carried out by bacteria and fungi example bacillus species and aspergillus niger next comes in the list is phosphorus solubilizing bio fertilizer the mechanism of this is to dissolve bound phosphate they secrete organic acid and lower soil ph by converting insoluble form of phosphate in the soil to soluble form so that the plant can utilize 
who carries out this bacteria and fungi example pseudomonas species bacillus circulans bacillus subtilis penicillium species agrobacterium micrococcus flavobacterium aspergillus species trichoderma species etc this phosphorus solubilizing uh, biofertilizer also carry out sulfur in these uh, biofertilizers this phosphorus based biofertilizer also oxidizes sulfur to sulfate which is in unusable form for the plants and it they make the sulfur to the usable form so that the plant can uptake this sulfur who does this sulfur oxidizing bacteria example thiobacillus species micronutrient biofertilizer micronutrient biofertilizer here chelating takes place acidification takes place and dissolving of zinc takes place all in the micro form so that the micronutrients are easily available to the plant so zinc for example zinc solubilizing which uh, are the organism which carry out this function sodomna species bacillus species mycorrhizae last in the list is plant growth promoting biofertilizer they produce some of the hormones that encourage plant root growth increases the nutrient availability and boost the crop yield example plant growth promoting rhizobacteria these rhizobacteria are present in rhizospheric soil example for this agrobacterium pseudomonas fluorescens arthrobacter ervinia species bacillus rhizobium Enterobacter, Streptomyces, Xanthomonas, etc. So, so my dear students, if you study this particular table if, in a very interestingly, then you can answer any type of questions related to biofertilizer. Next, how the biofertilizers are used? Mist irrigation after sowing, or substrate application before sowing. You can mix the biofertilizers with the substrate, a root dipping, sprinkler irrigation in nursery, dipping trays, drip irrigation of plant, after planting. You can use the biofertilizers in a tablet form, tablet application, and you can keep the tablet, then place the desired plant. So, mode of action we have already discussed in the table. So here in this slide, we are discussing the direct method as well as indirect method. Direct method, same nitrogen fixation, solubilization of uh, NPK, CDR4 production, production of phytohormone, enzymes, vitamins, micronutrients, etc. In indirect method, antibiotic synthesis, they are capable of secreting uh, antibiotics which can suppress the growth of pathogens. Hydrogen cyanide, cyanide synthesis, induced systematic resistance, production of cell wall degrading enzymes, etc. PGPR biofertilizers have this mechanism. The direct mechanism is what we have discussed till day, till now, and the indirect mechanism is they uh, promote ISR response preventing of plant disease. So these are some of the indirect uh, mechanism what it can provide to the plant when biofertilizer is applied. The process of production of biofertilizer at a larger scale include the concept of both the upstreaming process and downstreaming process. This concept from uh, the mother culture to flask then fermentation, then the broth, this process is upstream process whereas the downstream process includes monitoring the quality, centrifugation and uh, mixing it uh, with uh, the suitable media for application and developing it into the product form then marketing it. These are the downstream process of biofertilizer. So with this I would like to conclude this class wherein we have given an overview of 
what is bio fertilizer why it is used what are the different types of bio fertilizers and how it is applied what are the production process of bio fertilizers what are the advantages so see you in the next class if you have any doubt please don't forget to ask in our next class we will be discussing about the different uh, types of consor microbial consortium used for biofertilizer till then see you have a nice evening bye